Hello all, and I am the Big Tau Philosopher. And in this video, I would like to give my opinion of the psychological state of this woman named <coughs> Reality Winner, calling herself Sarah Winners. Sarah fits better than reality, but either way, she has no grasp on reality or how to win. Now, I want to do this pop psychology analysis, this analysis of this person based off of both her actions and her photos of herself. Now, generally, these would not be very telling, but these photos that she has taken of herself reveal a lot about her in terms of her personality because there are general trends that exist throughout each and every photo that you wouldn't often see with normal people because she's clearly not a normal person. Every photo is the exact same expressions, the exact same body language. So if you know what to look for, you can tell a lot about a person. Now, number one, we have this photo of her working out. Now, just so you know, when she entered the military, she weighed 110 pounds and 110, 118, something like that in that range. Now she's like 160 plus pounds or more. Now, if you look at her in this picture, she is clearly gigantic for a woman. And let me tell you something. As somebody who knows quite a bit about human physiology and exercise science, this woman is in no way natural. Now, as you'll notice in later photos, her face is covered with zits, pimples, as her back uh, looks like it might be as well, but her face is definitely covered with such. And if you look at her chest, she hardly has any breasts. Now, this kind of muscle development is extremely rare and almost impossible to achieve, especially the uh, liquidation of the uh, breasts where they've, they, they've been so minimalized as the most disappear. You almost always exclusively see this on women who are essentially juicing. Uh, I believe that Reality Winners is taking steroids, was taking steroids, because of course now she's in prison. But I believe that she's definitely juicing. Her muscle mass is far too great for a woman. She has the muscle mass of a man. So she is a juicer. I don't believe there's any question about that. And anybody who knows anything about this stuff will look at this picture and say, no kidding. It's obvious to me that she is a juicer. There's no question in my mind about that. I feel like a picture two, again, another picture, she looks atrocious. Look at how darkened her face is to hide the fact that it's broken out in zits. And look at her skin, it's extremely horrible. I mean, horrible, horrible skin. But look at the size of her shoulders, biceps, forearms. While not extremely defined, she is gigantic for a woman. And if you look at her earlier pictures, like before she joined the Air Force, and we'll see a few of those at the end. No way. Women do not, cannot get that big. Look, only men can enlarge their muscle mass to a great degree because of testosterone. Women tend to just get more cut. It's, it's almost, it's, and I would say impossible, it's very difficult for them to put on a lot of muscle mass. They can put on some, but not great deals like this woman. This is a male physique she has because she's taking testosterone and anabolic steroids. That's what I believe, just by looking at these pictures. It's not hard to figure that out. Now look at the appearance on her face. It's the same as one. This woman always has a blank appearance on her face. She has nothing, just, just a blank stare. There's no affectation whatsoever. There's no affect. She is just this totally blank slate. Same here. The face is blank, empty. She's attempting some kind of a humorless little turn up of the lips that I guess in her mind might be a smile, but it's really emotionless, the look on her face. Uh, totally without feeling. Now, this is very telling, I think. This is just my opinion. Now, this woman if we go by her actions, they're very poorly thought out. They're like the actions of a child, almost, really. I mean, think about it. 
There was no real thought put into what she did. She just acted on feeling. Now, this is generally what a lot of women do, but even most women are not this lacking in self-reflection. Now, look at this picture. Now, this appearance on her face, this scrunched up where she, I mean, these, these, this woman, I mean, in so many pictures, she has this almost like look of disgust on her face toward the camera. Nose pulled up, trying to make a grimace look tough. She just ends up looking disgusted. Everything about her is her trying to look tough. And there's no emotion, no affect. And it's obvious to me she's simply trying to look what, like what she considers to be a man. Of course, is failing horribly. But she's trying to be anything other than who she is. This woman strikes me as one of the most fake people I've ever seen. Very, very fake individual. Very fake. And every picture you see, she is expressionless. And I mean, she's so gigantic. I mean, this woman, you can see her in one of these pictures doing pull-ups where she's pulling herself up so high that she's up to her navel and thrusting herself, trying to thrust herself above the pull-up bar. This kind of brute strength, only men have that. Women cannot do that without chemical aid. They cannot. They have half our body strength. They don't have the physical strength to do that. And her gut is jutting out because there's so much muscle there. She has literally built up the body of a man on a woman, which explains why she's so ugly. This is very telling, I think, because it reflects a deeper mental disorder, which is, of course, liberalism, but a deeper personality uh, disorder as well. I believe this woman is a, you're one of your typical uh, narcissists. And, you know, clearly she spends a lot of time in the gym. There's some kind of uh, problem with her self-image, huge, huge problem. And, again, if you look at her shoulders, they're gigantic, her face... The skin is mottled and uh, 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 pimply at age of 25. Something's just not right about that. People that age should not have a face that looks like uh, pizza, okay? That's just not natural, not really. I mean, you can have bad acne or something, but let's be honest, it doesn't extend to that point and to that severity without some kind of aid, okay, in most cases. And it didn't exist before. So it didn't come out of nowhere. So I believe that Reality Winner was pumping herself up with steroids. Now, this can affect one's demeanor. Now, we look at a picture here at the very end of the video. And we may not have gotten to that point yet, but let me read it. And in this picture, she is clearly a before picture. Now this is where she just was starting to train on obviously. Now look at it. Look at this picture on the right. She's trying to turn down her brow some and on the left serious look. In both she's trying to look like this mean badass guy. This is all fake. This is all fake. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know what reality is. She's totally closed off from reality. She's creating this shell around herself of this fake affect, which is no affect. And, and then when there is affect, she's just snarling. She's attempting to snarl. Uh, there's never a smile on her face. And if you go and you Google pictures of this girl, you'll find hundreds of pictures, and not one of them is she smiling or anything. There's only one picture where it looks like she might be showing some kind of uh, a happiness, and that's when she's uh, 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 essentially hugging a cat. And yes, she's an old cat lady, people. Already at 25, she's an old cat lady. She hates men. 
She's been poisoned by feminism. If you look at pictures of her when she was 18, going into, or 21, or whatever, whatever age she was. I don't know if she went to university yet. You see, the mainstream media is doing a shitty job in covering this woman. They've given different dates in regards to when she joined the military. One says 2010, one says 2013. I've read this on multiple media sources. So they don't really want to talk about this story. Because they, they don't want to talk too much about her because she's a leftist. She's clearly one of theirs, and so they don't want to cover this. Now, whether or not she went to university or went right into the military out of high school, when she went into the military, you can look at her. She's like this short, kind of frumpy-looking, ugly girl in glasses. So that's your typical feminist overachiever because there's no way she's ever going to get a man, so she had better succeed academically. And in this picture, she's still quite small. This might be when she first started taking steroids. You look on the left, you can see that her face is already broken out. So she's starting to take the steroids. She's taking the testosterone. And on the right, she's already pumped up a little bit, and she's got a nasty snarl look on her face. Uh, let's read what she has to say. From November 2014 on the left versus today. Right. Weight is just a number, and that's what I wanted to share with you today. November 2014, in that picture, I weighed 118 pounds. And today, while I didn't weigh myself, would probably weigh in around 155. Now, this is very important, men and women out there. Uh, in the picture on the left, she was skinny, okay? Now, in the pictures I saw when she went into the Air Force or whatever, she looked a little fat, short and fat, which isn't really surprising because the standards that they hold women to in the military <laughs> essentially mean you can be short and fat and still get in. Now, oh, more like frumpy, but certainly not 118. So she's 118 pounds, or maybe it's just the outfit, the, the military uniform made her look a little bigger in the gut than she was, could be. I don't know. But she definitely was not 155. And so she's 155 now. And in that best picture on the right is nothing compared to pictures I just saw of, of 2017, which is uh, the first picture, second, yeah, the first picture that I showed you all in this lineup. She's gigantic, more like 170, 175, which is crazy. So she went from 118. So on t November 2014 versus today. Okay, so we all know how difficult this is. If any of us, any of you out there have ever lifted weights, to put on almost 40 pounds of muscle is very difficult, if not impossible. You've got to be doing a lot, a lot of lifting. This woman, and that's for a man, women cannot put on 40 pounds of muscle training naturally they cannot it is a scientific impossibility women cannot do that i'm sorry she is so lacking in knowledge about these things she's essentially telling us that she's a steroid freak that she's a testosterone freak okay but there's more in this that is very telling so now she's 155 and while there isn't a huge difference in my appearance, my life is vastly different than it was just over two years ago. I still love bodybuilding, bench pressing, cycling, running, and yoga every day. So she's an exercise addict. She does too much. She is an exercise addict, okay? And there's more because she is mentally ill. We, we know this already. She suffers from a mental illness. No question about that. And people who suffer from exercise addiction are addicts in regards to exercise <laughs> the same way that heroin addicts are addicts to drugs for the same reasons. They're trying to escape reality. They're trying to escape reality, create their own little world, their own little bubble that they can exist within to escape the real world. That's why leftism appeals to this girl so much because it's not reality. It's a world that's all about interpretation and relativism. So she loves that. That's why she's able to escape within it. It's not reality. It's all about feelings. And it's another world. It's not the real world, which she's trying to escape. So she loves bodybuilding, bench pressing, cycling, running, yoga, every day. Okay, every damn day is too damn much. Somebody that exercises seventy day, seven days a week and does this much, we're talking hours a day, that's 
over that's a good 15 to 20 hours a week of exercise is an exercise addict no different than being a drug addict <sighs> and that's never going to change well you'll have a lot of free time in prison to uh, work out for sure but you won't have all them steroids but my body image has done a complete 180 in november 2014 my life was miserable okay this is very interesting okay so her life was totally miserable before she created this new world this new self that revolved around her bodybuilding exercising life there was no good her she was miserable because she was living in reality she wasn't she hadn't found this wonderful addiction yet that she could use to escape from reality that would consume so much of her life that would even carry over into her quote unquote real life where even then she was just living inside her own head because she's got this buffed pumped up body that carries that addiction into the real world. It insulates her. It creates a bubble around her. So her body image has done a complete 180. In November 2014, my life was miserable. I had so many fitness goals, but my happiness was completely based off bringing that number on the scale lower and lower, paired with an eating disorder largely based off of OCD. Oh, my God, I could count on one hand what foods were safe to eat. Okay, so <laughs> she is mentally ill. Mentally ill. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a serious mental illness, okay? It is generally uh, uh, defined by, oh, uh, repetitive behavior, uh, addictive behavior, which explains her exercise addiction. So she is really, all this bodybuilding, all this exercise to the extreme, you know, shooting herself up with steroids, taking testosterone pills, look at her face, how broken out it is. If we looked at her back, I'm sure we would see the same zits and all that. So she is essentially juicing herself to become a different person. All the muscles she's built up, all the supposed self-confidence, self-esteem she's gained with it, it's all fake. It's all a, all a, a, a suit of armor. It's all to create a, a, a fantasy world that she can exist within, another world that's uh, uh, enclosed, is insulated from the real world that she must associate with. And her being that disconnected from reality could explain a great deal in regards to how she could be so delusional to think that she can just make photocopies of top secret documents and then mail them to newspapers and mail them with her real name. This is the very interesting thing. I want to discuss more how detached this woman is from reality and why I believe she's so detached that she is suffering from mental illness. First, now, this doesn't, uh, uh, abs you know, uh, 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 absolve her of any wrongdoing. Uh, what she did was uh, uh, willful. And while she was deluded and essentially detached somewhat from reality, the decisions she made led to this detachment. It was her solution to not being able to cope with reality. So she chose that solution. She made the choice to be this mentally ill nut job that she is. So... First, she emailed The Intercept, which is a media outlet, from her computer at the NSA. Now, that right there is crazy shit. You are suffering from a mental disconnect. She clearly didn't get this job because of her expertise in surveillance or security or intelligence or understanding how the world works. She got it because she speaks three Middle Eastern languages and she was formerly in the Air Force, okay? And because they're scraping the bottom of the barrel these days with the millennial generation who can't seem to do anything and don't have any real skills, it seems. So that's number one. Number two, she gave a real name to the Intercept. <laughs> she's not an anonymous source. She's an idiot. She gave her actual name to them. 
That right there points at a disconnect to reality, a lack of understanding of the consequences of her actions. Because if she had a full understanding of the consequences of her actions, she would never have given this news source her real name. Most uh, people who leak top secret information, whatever the reason might be, don't give their real identity. So right there, she's thinking she's some kind of patriot. She's thinking she's some kind of hero. She's thinking she's some kind of patriot in the main of... Uh, Edward Snowden, for example, as she, she doesn't seem to realize that he's also seen by many as a traitor, and he's hanging out in Russia right now because the American government wants to lop his head off, essentially. They want to execute him. Uh, so, you know, uh, you know, she's not too in touch with reality. Number three, she mailed them this information, and I believe she used her name and return address on the envelope. <sighs> so... This OCD freak, this steroid-infused, testosterone-infused freak who went from 118 pounds to 155 pounds. And look at the picture on the right. She's saying she's 155 pounds in that picture. Now, if you look at the pictures, the very first picture I posted in this lineup, and I'm going to post it again at the end, she is at least 170, 175 pounds, maybe more. She is huge. She looks like a big man. I've rarely seen a woman this big unless she was a professional bodybuilder. And professional bodybuilding women can't get that big without chemical aid. So this girl has a lot of mental problems, and if you look at the expressions on her face throughout all the pictures you find on the internet, she has a dead fish look on her face, totally dead, no expression, no affect, she's completely emotionless, she presents this facade to the world of toughness, and she's built up all this muscle to act like armor, to insulate her from the real world and to carry her addiction over into her non-exercise life so she can continue to hide from reality. And that's all it is. So she is a sufferer from obsessive compulsive disorder. She is bulimic, anorexic. She had eating disorders as well as OCD. She is mentally ill. She's also a liberal, which is itself a mental disorder. She is very, very sick. And maybe, now that she's in prison, locked away from all the distractions that she could use to help her escape reality and locked away from the drugs that she was taking to create that, essentially, what was armor to protect herself from reality. Maybe, just maybe, unlikely, but maybe, she will start to get back in touch with reality and realize the stupidity of what she's done. But unfortunately, it's too late because she already did it. And she's going to spend some time in prison, I think, unless she gets some uber-liberal judge, which is quite possible considering how many people are liberals today. Whatever the case, whatever the case might be, she's going to spend some time in jail. And whatever happens, she needs a therapist badly. Everything she did spoke of a total lack of judgment. And even the way she did it, show signs of mental illness, detachment from reality, photocopying it in her office. And those photocopiers in those uh, 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 highly secure facilities, you need uh, codes to use them. You have to punch in an access code, and the printer will record and log your uh, <laughs> scanners too, whatever. They'll record, they'll log the day and time, uh, and the uh, identity of the person using the device. I mean, this girl is a moron. She used her own access code. She used her own office to print these. She used her own office computer to communicate with the intercept, which was eventually how they discovered who it was because half a dozen people could have been the culprit. But she was the only one communicating with the intercept from her NSA email which is 100% open and readable by her bosses because it is a government.com email. How stupid is that? How, they, 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 there's no way she could have done something like that without being mentally ill. That kind of level of stupidity from someone who's supposedly intelligent, and she's not intelligent. This is somebody who's running away from the past, trying to become a different person, trying to create a new persona, 
And that's exactly what she's doing. Now, that could be rooted in a lot of different things. She could have suffered severe mental, emotional, or physical abuse as a child. She looks like somebody who'd suffered that. It would explain her need to enter the military, become some big, bad, buff bitch with this uh, uh, just dead-eyed, dead-stared, snarling dis- look of disgust on her face with disgust about the entire world, it seems. Everything she look at, snarling, nose up, lip up like Rambo or something, just evil, nasty, kind of, I'm disgusted with the whole world look on her face when she does have a look on her face. Otherwise, it's just dead, dead, dead. Very, very strange girl, and I see just a lot of mental illness here. She needs help, big time. She needs prison, too. (laughs) But while she's there, I hope she gets help. Because if she doesn't, she's going to come out in a lot worse shape than when she went in. I am the MGTOW Philosopher, and I wish you a good day. Take care.